take a look at the Insta360 ONE X2. Ton of features, this is a 360 camera obviously, so the big advantage of that is that you can just put the camera in a certain location, then you can reframe your shots later. And uh, with the two applications that Insta360 provides uh, for the desktop as well as your mobile device, makes editing and exporting really easy. And we'll touch on that here in a little bit. In addition, this does have 5.7K video resolution with an increased bitrate over the previous version, enhanced colors, improved audio recording, so four total microphones, a long lasting battery, which is increased again, a waterproof of the 10 meters, AI power shot lab and allows more versatility in your applications. This video, we're gonna do a quick unboxing. We're gonna test it out, see what it can do. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now the camera itself, you can see it does have uh, the lens protection on. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll rip that off. Definitely, if you get this camera, try to protect it. They do have some cases and stuff that goes along well. Just make sure it's protected, make sure it's clean once you're using it. Now the camera also has a round circular screen and this screen is gonna uh, be a way for you to not only interact with your settings, so you can go through the different video resolutions. You can actually view the 360 view on the screen, which I think is pretty cool. But this also serves as a preview for your recording especially when you're in steady cam mode and that's where it gives you that traditional action camera view we also going to have the shutter button on the front of the device and the shutter button i use it to record obviously take your pictures manually but it also it has a quick record function guys to where all you need to do is just Press the shutter button and it should start recording even if the device is powered off. Next, we're gonna have two doors on the 360. Uh, they are gonna have that protective rubber around the edges that they squeeze nice and firmly. Feel secure enough to drop this in water, take it on the water with you, uh, and it shouldn't have any issues. The top door is gonna house a USB-C port and this is gonna be good for not only charging your device but also accessing your media if you wanna just quickly plug it into your computer. Now, the bottom door is gonna have two latches on it and you are gonna see that protective blue uh, rubber around the edges. They pop the battery out. The battery is massive. The battery is going to be a 1630 milliamp hour battery. Uh, this should give you up to 80 minutes of recording under normal condition. For me, just testing this out, guys, this battery lasts a long time. Really hard to kill this in one day. Now, if you look on the inside, they do also have the micro SD card slot. It's so also in the box, we're gonna have some paperwork, we're gonna have some warranty information, quick start guide. They also included a microfiber cloth, as well as a nice carrying case, soft carrying case that protects the entire camera. So also we have the Insta360 invisible selfie stick now this is probably one of the best selfie sticks i've used or seen and this one is really unique the build quality was magnificent just holding it in your hands you feel how premium this could be so as far as what it can do uh of course the software on the camera is going to cut it out so you won't really see it but just the mechanism how to extend it and retract it no need to use a twist or a lock-in clip or any type of locking mechanism to have it stay in place all you got to do is simply slide it out it stays in place and it does what it's supposed to do now as far as the extension it extends from nine inches to about 47 inches good enough to get whatever shot you want now next box we're going to have the motorcycle bundle and the motorcycle bundle is going to include a, a couple accessories just to get the best recordings when you're either on a motorcycle or on a bicycle. First thing we're gonna have is the mount for your motorcycle, handlebars, and all you need to do is squeeze one side, it'll tighten, and then you have another adjustment. And this adjustment actually uh, tighten both the top as well as the bottom of the rest of the mount to kind of give you the best angle. So I think this is a great design, it works well, and just getting it locked in is pretty easy. They also included the helmet mount. The helmet mount is gonna have the traditional action camera type clip on it, but it does have some 3M tape where you can go ahead and just stick it to your helmet then you can pop it on and off and you can get some really cool shots from on top of your helmet besides that we have a lot of different action camera accessories but let's go ahead and boot this thing up and see what we can do with this camera the device itself as far as the setup wasn't really much involved i booted up hit the power button and it will come on and it brings you right into the user interface. Now, with the actual round screen, it's surprisingly very useful. You can swipe left, right, up or down and uh, then you can get through your different menus, guys. Your menus, you can play with your settings, you can go into pro mode, you can play with a different quality. You can switch your cameras or you can use it to kind of 
pan around if you're in 360 mode. So a lot of different options here. Like I said, if you are in that steady cam mode, it does go into a traditional action cam field. So what that means is that you will use either lens to capture your video. And with that, you can swap between cameras as well. You also have a panoramic mode, so you can switch to that and take your pictures. You can choose your resolution. They do have a pro mode, they have a night mode. So a lot of different options to go in there. And if I had to go over every single one, this video would take forever. So the round screen is nice to have, but also a cool addition is that this also connects directly to your smartphone via the Insta360 application. And um, this application allows you to do everything that you can do on the actual device via the touchscreen. But in my opinion, it just makes everything a lot easier. So a bigger preview screen, a bigger menus to navigate, but it provides all the same options. So, so I found myself using my smartphone for the most part to, to not only go through the different settings, but navigate and preview my shots. And I think just pairing this with your smartphone is really cool now the app on your smartphone does allow you to edit as well we'll get into the main selling feature on that here in a little bit but before we do let's take this outside see what it can do and then we'll jump back into editing and exporting your content So real quick guys, I wanted to just give you a taste of what the audio sounds like. Um, for most of this video, I have been using uh, this portable recorder. Uh, I know I'm in the park, a lot of people out here, a lot of noise, but uh, this is what the audio sounds like on the portable recorder. This is what the audio sounds like on the Insta360. Now, uh, I am gonna go ahead and turn it around just to see if it makes any difference. It does have microphones uh, spread uh, throughout the actual device. And it does have a mode where you can turn on the direction where it focuses on the voice. Uh, but I would say if you want quality audio, um, plan to have either a portable recorder. I know this does have a USB-C, so there is a rig that you can get that plugs into the C where you can put in a headphone or something like this. Maybe you do a voiceover, but the audio on this is not going to be great. Just wanted to put that out there. So hopefully by now you can kind of see why this camera is so impressive and so important. Uh, not only do you get those shots that you wouldn't normally be able to get by yourself, but also you get the freedom of not having the guesswork when you're actually shooting the footage. Uh, with the 360 camera guys, you put it in one spot, you do your activity, and then you always have the option to edit it later and kind of makes it perfect. Now, uh, just going through some of the video, I was able to get some different vantage points from lower views uh, where I can take a look at the bike tire or the road if I wanted to. Also had some higher shots where it actually looked like a drone was hovering next to the, the trees and next to the bushes. So I, I think that was really cool. The tracking on this is amazing. And I'll show you how this looks in the app here in a little bit. And I was able to just either select myself or select an object that I was able to go back and kind of just make uh, it look like the cam was following me. As you can see there, I am in the woods and uh, I'm looking around because there's a sign that says Gator. So I had to kind of be aware of my surrounding, but just walking around the bike, with the camera mounted on the handlebar, I can do my narration, I can do my, my video, and, and then when I'm done, come back and just track myself. As far as the stabilization, stabilization was 
magnificent. Tried it both in the Steadicam mode. I also tried it in 360 mode and just running back and forth. The camera did really well just keeping the jerking and vibration to a minimum. If you're someone who's on the bike trails or is jogging or just doing a lot of action footage, this is gonna be an amazing tool. Now editing didn't really take that long to catch on. Couple minutes just playing with the different options, both in the desktop application as well as your smartphone. And they both have their uses and benefits in my opinion. Now for the desktop application, this is gonna be a powerhouse. This is where you have your 5.7K 4 res that you can export beautiful looking footage as you can see there. All you need to do is plug in your Insta360 to your device or you can copy the files directly to a folder in your desktop. Then you import them, then you can start playing with the different options. Now, as far as the videos in the left hand pane, you are gonna see the different videos that you have. You are going to see a preview when you hover your mouse over it. It is going to tell you some information as far as the video length, as far as the type of video it is. So all of the information is going to be there. You drag your video into your timeline, then you can start working. Now within the timeline, you can play pause obviously, but you also have the option to, to mark your trim, to cut your video. You have your volume options. But the hot topics of the software is, one is the deep tracking as well as your AI editing features. And two is gonna be your actual keyframes. Now keyframes is where you mark on your footage where you want some action to happen. So for me, I use keyframes to change camera views. So if I mark two spots, for instance, then I pan the camera around in between that keyframe, the camera, and then play it back. The camera automatically pans to where I want it. And you can play with the speed of the pan depending on how far apart those keyframes are. So once you have it set to how you want, you can adjust that and it works great. Now this also has the option to do a time shift. Once you're in time shift, you will see the option to add the motion blur. I definitely recommend doing that because it will make your footage look not only realistic, but cooler once you export it. You won't see it necessarily in editing, but you will see it once it's exported. Now, in addition to that, the deep track is probably the most used feature in the software, both on the desktop as well as your smartphone. With the deep track, all you need to do is select deep track, then you can draw the rectangle around the object that you want to track and just select start tracking. It will start tracking it. And once you're done tracking what you need to track, you can go ahead, just cut it, stop track it and then that will remain and that's how I was able to get the camera to essentially follow me around the bike when I was doing my narration. So a lot of cool options there. That's probably a separate video as far as going over all the in and outs of the actual software. But once you start playing with it, it almost becomes second nature. Over to the mobile application. One thing I would say for the mobile app is if you're planning to edit on it, I do recommend downloading the footage to your device. Uh, you can edit it while you connect it via Wi-Fi to your camera, but I do find that it does have issues. Within the app up top, you're gonna have your video types, you have your photo standards, so it's all separated there. And once you select your footage, you are gonna have a lot of those same options. You can change the resolution. They have a couple options there, 169, so you can still export it widescreen, that's 1-1, one, one, as well as a 23-35 one. Below that, you have the option to trim, you have your multi-view option, freeze, stats, frame. You also have filters that you can apply to your face as well as your footage and you do have the speed option as well. The mobile app also offers the deep track and again you select the object that you want, draw your circle around it and then you can go ahead and um, track it and you can stop it where you want it. So a lot of those cool features are going to carry over to the mobile application. Price on the standalone is $386.99, but also have some kits uh, depending on the activity that you're into. So they have a motorcycle kit, they have a crater kit light, they also have the ultimate kit, battery kit, car kit. So if you're in the market for a 360 cam or even an action cam, definitely worth checking out. If you guys have any questions about this, drop it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching again, and I'll catch you on the next one.